this Q here. Okay. Right. Take two. Take two. Um, okay. Welcome everyone to this eighth 100 days of no code demo day. Um, it's really wonderful to have everyone in the 100 days of no code family all under one roof. Participants from the challenge, the boot camp, members of our community, all here today. Now, whilst I may be very much preaching to the choir here, I always like to start these events by quickly crystallizing the age old question, what actually is no code? Uh, to tee up the incredible products we'll be seeing tonight. So in a nutshell, it's a set of tools that make building websites, apps, and software easier than it ever has been before. And that's because we essentially have the power of code without having to write it. Instead, we, we, we can build things visually from our imagination, um, which ushers in this new, faster, more affordable and flexible way of building software. And why is this important? Because 99.7% of us who couldn't bring their ideas to life up until this point now can. And that's where 100 days of no code comes into play. By providing the content, the community, and the habit field system to help anyone learn to no code in an accessible way. So in doing this, we're creating a world where anyone can build, which is one um, where we have a more diverse cast of problem solvers, more accessible careers into tech, more inclusive digital spaces, more entrepreneurs, and greater digital literacy. So tonight is really a celebration of, of this journey that we're all on, but also a demonstration of how life-changing no-code can be. So we're lucky to be joined um, by five demoers tonight, all from a non-techie background, and who've participated in one of our previous boot camps, showcasing the awesome products uh, from mobile apps to web apps that they have built, all without writing any code, of course. So, but um, demoing it can be scary. Um, I know this very well myself. So for everyone in attendance tonight, make sure you do these three things. First of all, grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, and just get ready to absorb and enjoy the um, awesome products that will be showed in front of you tonight. Secondly, um, make sure to stay on mute just uh, to respect the demos and, and enjoy them in all their glory. And then thirdly, and most importantly, share your love in the chat, but also on socials um, for each demo uh, using the 100 days of no code hashtag. Alrighty, um, so Harold is going to share in the chat a pre-populated tweet you can hit if you want to start that cheerleading uh, off with a bang. Um, but otherwise, I think we are all ready to uh, get our demos underway. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to you, Zaya, um, when you're ready. Um, but take your time, no rush. And uh, yeah, excited to get going. Hey everyone, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah, good to see everyone. Um, my name is Arian Zaya, and um, I come from a non-technical background and I jumped from banking to product recently. Um, and I joined the last boot camp and honestly had no expectation at first, but it ended up being a super awesome um, experience for me and um, on the side, I'm a big adrenaline junkie and I like trying out new activities and like trying out new extreme sports. And um, the problem I see is that there's no like central um, space for those type of people to like share what they've done, and uh, meet similar minded people and just be able to connect with each other. And there's also a group of people who are afraid to try out these exciting um, like activities or don't know uh, who to go with, for example. So that's why I started building um, Adrenal Life during the MVP uh, bootcamp. Uh, I'm just gonna demo the work, uh, 
user journey for everyone. Um, and I built this entirely on uh, Adalo. Uh, it's a mobile app to, um, develop, no code developer. And also for the database, um, this was purely on Adalo itself. Um, it's super intuitive and I didn't really need to use other um, no code products for this. So it's a gamify your life concept. And if I click already have an account, I'm just going to sign in. Uh, one password. <laughs> So you can see the home or feed um, screen. Uh, you see a list of active adventurers out there, um, what missions they've accomplished and their photo proof and how many mission streaks they have. And you can also like, um, like these experiences and just see what people are doing around you. Um, if you go to the explore screen, <laughs> weak password. Um, so you choose your adventure worlds and currently, um, for example, Earth Saver World, where you get to do like small quests to help um, save the Earth, but these worlds are currently locked. And if you go down, you, you can see all the missions around the world. Um, I initially just hand select, selected a few that were interesting. And if you go to the extreme world, um, this is based on your current location and you can see all the uh, missions around you, like uh, exploring the underworld. And you can also create your own mission here in the uh, plus button. And if you go back, for example, if you look at, uh, click this mission, you can see where it is. And it also tells you the details. Um, I used uh, chat GPT for the details because I was running out of words. And you can also see how people have completed this mission before based on their um, posts. Um, and if you go back, you can also type in like a location you would like to search, like let's say San Diego. Uh, you can see that go floorboarding is a mission that's three kilometers away and you can try that out or you can just do a surprise mission for yourself. Um, in this case, I tend to go downhill mountain biking at death road. Um, and if you click on take on mission, uh, you first need to sign and consent to, of course, the risks involved. And if you submit, um, you it says like you have seven days to go downhill mountain biking so the clock starts sticking and for example like if you're completing this like full, and then you pick your completion time and of course you need a photo proof um let's just pick this photo here and i completed this mission and you can also match with a partner to complete this mission together, which is a feature that's really um, uh, attractive, but I wasn't able to complete it at that time. And, but based on your um, like adventure map and your location, it matches you up with a partner to complete this together. So, and people have been saying it could be a better dating app, but and now you can just submit and share with the world and it's congratulations and then it updates uh, the feed. So there's also a leaderboard where it shows top adventurers um, based on their experience points and streaks. And you can also go just visit their profile um, and you have your favorites here. And of course your profile um, your current experience points and you can see that this has been added to your accomplished missions and you're also able to edit your profile and yeah <laughs> that's it uh, for my MVP but in the long term it would be ideal for me to uh, maybe like 
collaborate or partner with um, like extreme sports communities. And um, personally, Red Bull is my favorite. So I would definitely need to get more feedback and talk to people out there to maybe revise it. Um, but uh, this idea was actually originated during week one where we um, brainstormed ideas and then I thought of this and at first I was really doubtful of like if this would be feasible because I was envisioning it as like a big gamified experience but the community was like super helpful they all encouraged me to just give it a start and as you can see like this is converted into an actual product um, and in fact like I built this in one or two days so you can do that too and I encourage like everyone to uh, join the boot camp and try out what you can do. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, Thank uh, you. Yeah. Um, so Blaine has just said, get in touch with GoPro. I think that'd be a cool brand partner. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, that's definitely definitely added. It would be uh, like a good like ad on the app, <laughs> like their products. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, uh, definitely soak in the love that you're getting in the chat. Um, uh, I think I've said this to you before, but really love the way you're kind of incentivizing um, the behavior. But also, um, I think like Dan said in the chat, um, if he had this app, he'd be far more likely to do it. Like, I think it's good for people that like extreme sports, but it's also good for people that like the idea of extreme sports, but never do them. Um, it's a kind of bringing or taking people outside their comfort zone as well. So um, yeah, amazing stuff. Um, very excited to see where it goes. Um, anyway, thanks so much, Isaiah, and um, appreciate you sharing. All righty. Um, okay, so um, talking of Dan, um, uh, over to you. Um, yeah, excited to see your demo. Awesome. Uh, yeah, great work uh, with the uh, app as well, though. Uh, that we just saw. Yeah, really cool. Uh, let me do some stuff, I guess. Um, let's go to that. So, can everybody see my screen? Yes, all good now. Perfect. Cool. Uh, Pluto. Uh, is the app that I'm building. It lets you automatically transcribe and summarize audio-based feedback. Um, so I'm Dan, I'm the co-founder of a customer research company, um, which was started after a failed music tech startup that we started uh, a million years ago, it feels like. Um, then I discovered no code uh, in like 2018, um, based, of, I think it was Glide, which kind of got me into it, um, which lets you build an app from Google Sheet in like five minutes. And I was like, oh my God, I can build shit. Yeah. Um, what I do now, I'm a no-code developer. I'm an educator. I run business and no-code programs. I'm a content creator, make my own products and learn new stuff all the time. Let's talk about the origin of Cluso. So my main thing is that I hate voice notes. <laughs> Max will know this. Everyone who knows me knows this. I hate voice notes because um, when someone sends them to you, I have to listen to it and I can't just scan it. Uh, but also I got a customer research company and my co-founder spends millions of hours analyzing data from his user research. And um, I generally go by this rule of following my curiosity and I wanted to learn AI. So I was like, cool, what can I do with those things? Um, so the problem that I'm trying to solve is gathering feedback is difficult. Um, analyzing feedback is time consuming. Uh, it's challenging to get unbiased insights. Typically people will read into feedback the way that they want to read into it and ignore all the other things. Um, and then it's difficult to figure out what to do with those insights too. So I built an app called Cluso, which uh, auto summarizes uh, audio feedback. So let me, so this is the dashboard screen of uh, Cluso. Um, you can create audio surveys and um, you can create questions. So you can write your own questions or you can generate some. So if I press this button, uh, let's talk, let's say um, new, uh, no code, no code builders. Um, who do I want to talk to? Uh, let's say my current uh, audience. Um, 
what's the best thing about learning new uh, technology. Uh, ignore my typos, it doesn't matter. Um, and I'm currently using uh, GPT-3, uh, OpenAI, to um, do stuff. So hopefully, let's see if this actually works. So I should get some automatically generated questions. Yep, they're popping up now. So what mo motivated you to learn uh, new technology? How has learning new technology impacted your career? What's the most exciting things? So yeah, those are questions that I could add to my survey. And then um, I have a question here that I've already got in here and I'm going to do something wild and uh, maybe pick, uh, yeah, anyone who wants to answer this, they can. Let's just see what if it breaks. So I've put a link to my survey in here. And if you click the link, um, it will ask you to, um, put in a name and an email address and then a and you put some fake stuff in there and then it will ask you a question and you can use do a little voice survey and what people should see is this screen so let's say dan um dan at gmail.com and typically what you'll see is this screen um but yeah max maybe get you to uh do a little voice note as we know you love them <laughs> yeah i wish i wish you, you told me that before i sent you one down <laughs> um, um so i'll just show what happens when you look at the screen so uh, my motivation to take the 100 days of no code challenge was to meet wonderful people make new friends and build really cool stuff uh when i end the recording um you can play back so uh, my motivation to take the 100 days of no-code challenge was to meet wonderful people. Uh, you could submit that response and then let you complete the survey. And then what should happen is, cool, I'm getting some responses in. So I couldn't code and I wanted to build cool ideas. Um, my motivation, uh, that, that was my one. Um, cool, excellent. Yep. Cool, yeah, automatically coming in. Uh, yeah, it works. Live demo gods are blessing me. So um, what it does now is if I go to see the study details, I can see all the responses coming through and then I can do something called uh, auto summarize. And hopefully again, if the demo gods, oh, they have. Yeah, the Friday motivation for taking part in 100 Days Challenge was to meet new people, make new friends, build interesting products, and learn how to use technology to generate income. Cool. It also presented a great opportunity to learn technical skills. Yeah. So automatically summarize that so I don't have to listen to any of your voice notes or read them. Um, and then, um, yeah, I could do cool stuff. This is really good. I was very surprised that this is actually working. Um, and then, yeah. So that's the demo. That's kind of how it works. Um, tools I used, Bubble, um, OpenAI, uh, and Assembly AI to do um, all the like transcription, audio transcription, and then loads of other stuff. What's next? Um, generate business insights from the text and summaries. So as you can see from that summary, people wanted to generate revenue. So I could probably come up with some ideas on how to generate revenue. Um, get more businesses to test the product for feedback because feedback is good, uh, which is why I'm building a feedback app. Um, and it's doing the most important thing, which is start generating revenue so I don't have to work anymore, um, other than on this, obviously, because I love stuff. Help. Um, yeah, so I'll give you all access to the app. Um, use the app, find bugs, and give me feedback. Um, apparently, you find 90% of bugs um, and issues just after the seven people using your product. So um, yeah, that would be cool um, because building stuff is difficult. And you should join the bootcamp. Um, I run one of the weeks and it's always fun, informative and practical. And I um, think that everyone that I've been on the program with has been wonderful and has made some really cool things. So yeah, you should join the bootcamp mostly for me, but maybe for all the other people as well and all the things that you'll learn. Um, done stop sharing
Cool. Amazing. Um, yeah, getting that was the smoothest demo I've ever done. <laughs> it was, was, yeah, I was I was bracing myself for those. I was I was I was bracing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and they all just came in really smoothly, and they probably you've met your seven. A person sort of threshold probably yeah. for the amount of testers you need so that's really cool um uh yeah thanks so much for the kind words dan but also for for sharing um that really cool demo and, and lots of people are, are kind of loving it in the chat um uh, i think uh, there's a couple of cool um suggestions so sudha um mentions have you considered setting up with uh whatsapp business api to allow for customer feedback um that could be an interesting angle um that yeah. is a great idea and i will probably try and do that next week <laughs> <laughs> nice um yeah and that's the speed of no code right you could probably ship that in the next week so yeah I, so uh, i was talking to my brother and i was like oh there might be some people who might be a bit concerned about like their voice being used and i was like okay maybe we can make anonymous surveys and i did it in like two hours <laughs> just added the feature and he was just like what <laughs> oh, yeah um the power the power of no code right there um but yeah um love that i love that you're solving tangible problem it's come from your personal pain point with with voice notes but actually is relevant to so many other people and businesses um and i think for our next boot camp i'm definitely going to use it to collect feedback along the way so um that's excellent cool. Yeah, that would be five pounds a user, please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all right. It's all right. We got we got got you covered. Um, all right, cool. So, um, uh, yeah, we're blasting through these. Um, I think we're on time, just about. Um, so thanks again, Dan, for your amazing demo. And uh, it's uh, time to uh, uh, can't speak. Pass over to you, uh, Caitlin. <clears throat> oh, cool. feel slightly intimidated by how slick your demo was, Dan. But we'll go there. Um, hi everyone, I'm Caitlin. I um, did, I think that was it, the most recent boot camp, so uh, in November, um, come from definitely a non-technical background, so from a commercial background, um, did a degree in psychology, um, and then was really introduced to no code um, in the role that I'm in at the moment, when I realised that I had a lot of repetitive tasks that I did a lot, and really didn't want to do them, and the, my manager said, we'll find a way to automate them, and that's where I kind of got um, interested in it. Um, so the the app that I've built really stemmed from uh, a personal pain point. So I um, recently moved to London and one of the most exciting things about that was that I absolutely love food and there's so many restaurants and bars to try. Um, I had a lot of family coming down for a large family dinner and I was tasked with finding somewhere to um, host that birthday party. Um, as you might have experienced if you've been in London and searched for a restaurant, there is loads um, and I was going through blog posts, I was going through Google, I was going through TripAdvisor reviews um, and I thought I don't really trust a random stranger on TripAdvisor to tell me whether this restaurant is going to have the vibe or the atmosphere that I'm looking for. Um, so I decided that actually what I, when I go to a new restaurant or a new bar what I'm really looking for is to find out what my friends thought and um, to find that social proof of people in my network that I trust that we have the same preferences. And um, so I built um, Greet, which is essentially a kind of social media app, but really a restaurant discovery um, and review platform where you can follow your friends and see what they're liking and save them down. So I'll just do a quick demo. So I built it on Adalo. Let me know when you can see my screen. You're, yeah, all good, Caitlin. Perfect. Um, so this is the interface. Um, I've skipped the bit where you log in and you create an account. Um, this is the home page. There's really three sort of navigation pathways that a user can take when they go on. So they can browse um, restaurants, they can review restaurants, and they can follow friends. If you click on browse, um, what I did is build it out in the kind of use cases that you might do. So are you looking for a particular cuisine? Are you looking in a particular location? Or are you looking for a particular, uh, by a particular occasion? So for example, say I was in London and I want to go for dinner tonight um, and I haven't thought about it and I need a walk-in. I can type in this and it will come up with restaurants which allow walk-ins. Say for example, I want to click on this one. Um, this looks good. 
what it'll do is it'll bring up a page which gives you kind of the standard stuff that you'd expect from a review platform. So what's its location, what's its cuisine, what's its address. But crucially, I can also see reviews of people that I follow that have been there um, and I can see what they think. So, for example, here you can see that I've got a few of my friends to fill it in and I can see what they like. If I want to look at it in detail, I can click on a review and it will take me to a review that my friend's written about this restaurant. So I can see that my friend Hannah's been to this restaurant with her boyfriend. They really liked it. Great. I can like that. Um, I can like that and then I can also save the restaurant. So if I click on this, it will save down to my restaurants. If I go, I can then write my own review um, and populate that as well. And the next feature is a home button. Uh, once that's happened, I can then do different things. So um, another thing I can do is follow. So there's loads of users um, that are on it already. People can create accounts. I can either search this way or I can just search their name. If, for example, I wanted to click on this person, I can see um, her profile, I can see what she's reviewed, and I can follow her. And then what it does is it builds up sort of a pathway of people that you like, and you can follow them basically around all of the different ones that they try. So if I go to my home page, I can see my profile, it will show me who I'm following, who my followers are, don't have any followers, should probably get some. Um, I can also see the saved places where I've saved down. So you can start saving lists of places that you want to try. Um, that's basically sort of the where it's at, at the moment. The, the next features that I want to do is to integrate this as a booking feature. So this button doesn't work at the moment, um, but integrate that so that you can directly book through the restaurants. I also want to um, integrate the Google Maps API. So one that you can geotag, but also so that users can upload their own restaurants and start sort of creating like maps and pathways um, of different things that they've saved. Um, and the other thing that I want to do is then create comments so that people can comment on different reviews and say like, oh, that looks great. I want to try it too. But longer term, the, the idea is to build uh, an algorithm off the back of the reviews so that you can start recommending other places that people should try based on what you and your friends have liked. So say I went to the Shume in Shoreditch tonight, um, it could use like the other things that I've tried to recommend somewhere else in a different location. Um, but that's much further down the line and I have no idea how to do that yet. Um, but that's where I got to. Um, I had never heard of Adalo before. Um, I did the boot camp and I think I spent about eight hours on it. So um, yeah, really, really excited about where it can go in the future. Cool, I'll stop sharing. Great stuff. Um, thanks, Caitlin. And uh, love the way you kind of paint, painted the picture as to why, like, why you built that um, and where that's come from. Uh, and again, I think that's kind of one of those classic personal pain points that like lots of other people experience as well um keen to hear are you um have you sort of started using it in your kind of um friend circle yet or have you, yeah, so you, have you dropped it in the whatsapp group or yeah what's so that's the that's the that's the yeah so my friends are using it um and the idea is to start start small so build it up from friend reviews um have it as like a close friends app to start with yeah. um and then once you start meeting like other foodie friends, get them on with the idea that kind of the reviews should be relevant to those people. And then you build it out that way rather than just kind of going across everyone and it not being as relevant. Mm. Yeah. And I can see that. I mean, like it has the kind of classic network effects where it's just sort of more people you add, the more valuable it becomes. So um, yeah, that's really exciting. Um, cool. Well, thanks so much, Caitlin, and uh, excited to see where it goes. Um, yeah, let, let me know when you're sort of launching it in London properly. Yeah, I love it. Try it. Yeah, um, cool. Um, All righty. So I think we are now good to move on to uh, to Lee's demo. Um, I can see you, Lee. You look ready to go. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, oh, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Over to you. <clears throat> OK, cool. Uh, share my screen. Uh... Oh, it's, sorry, it's asking me for permission. <laughs> One sec. Okay. No One sec. I've just done a reinstall, so I forgot about that. Um, <laughs> you're all good. You're all good. And if, if worse comes to worse, I can I can I can share my screen. Um, so we're all good. Is it? Oh, it's asking. Are you seeing that now? No. Not yet. Um, 
Okay, let me see if I can share the whole screen. Sure. No probs. In the meantime, I'll I'll uh, get up focus tweet on my uh okay uh yeah it's asking me to quit and reopen which okay shall i shall i do that or do you want to share it i yeah, why, why why don't you share it okay uh, max and I'll, I'll talk talk you through okay amazing could you just drop the link while i i, I know this is this is the thing lee you've launched so many things i can't actually find <laughs> yeah. the thing you've launched okay okay there, there it is there's All the right, link perfect. so so yeah what while it's while it's booting up for you max i'll just give yeah. a bit of background so um focus tweet is a twitter app um probably does what it says on the tin um i i had the idea for focus tweet um based on my own frustration with uh w tweeting on twitter um I, I work online my background's creating online um i recently in the last year become a bubble developer through you know the different projects that i've launched and I often find myself, and, and you, you may may or not be able to relate, I find myself working online and I'll be in the middle of a project and I'll get an idea for a tweet and I'll go on Twitter to tweet that idea and I'll then see everybody else's amazing content and I'll end up down a rabbit hole and um, um, I don't tweet, I forget the the idea and I don't do any work. And two hours later, I'm still on Twitter. So that that was the motivation for Focus Tweet. And I think Focus Tweet is unique in that it's both a 100 days of no code learning path and it's an app. And that came about because uh, Max kindly invited me to do a, a learning path. And um, what, what happened was I had this idea and we were talking about what, what I could do to kind of help people learn more about Bubble and also integrating Bubble with Twitter. And so I ended up kind of developing that learning path and the app at the same time. When you get to the end of the learning path for anybody who's done it, um, I encourage you to kind of go off in your own direction, see where else it can take you, you know, in terms of designing the app and exploring Bubble and maybe building something else out of it. And I guess the app version is my own uh, rabbit hole of where I where I ended up going with it. So this is the landing page. I, I don't know if you want to scroll down, uh, Max. Um, so this this is actually new. I, I was building this. So I actually built the app a year ago, um, but I've been working on it this last weekend during the No Code Build weekend. And um, it's the reason was the functionality was there, but the app itself. I wasn't happy with how it was looking. It didn't really have a landing page. Um, so I used chat GPT, uh, like many others, to write the copy. I'm someone who struggles with writing. You know, writing is kind of a, a means to an end rather than something that I love. So to be able to go to chat GPT and, and throw in my ideas and get it to kind of help me formulate something that another human can read. <laughs> is is really helpful so yeah this is the landing page and then i'll just talk you through how you log in so um it being a twitter app it takes you to this first page when you so you can click login or sign up whichever you want max and it takes you to this page so this page before you click that button um is normally on the original app it just took you straight through but i've noticed other twitter apps they let you know what you're signing into and people have asked me this previous users of the app have said how do i know you're not going to steal my twitter account so i think to have a page like this to kind of say you know i'm not going to steal your twitter account and that you can pull out you know you know you can revoke access um whenever you like is is good to have so yeah if you click the button max it will it should take you through and then it will ask you to uh authenticate with the app um, and then it should load on the page. It asks you for your email address the first time you sign up. I mean, you can put in anything you like in there, Max. Uh, just a dummy one's fine. Um, so it, this is a workaround that I had to come up with for Bubble and Twitter because the Twitter Bubble plugin doesn't capture email addresses. And then, so the idea is you come in here and you can... Um, write an idea for a tweet so you can just say um 
whatever you want. And then you've got the option then to either save the idea or tweet it. And Max, if you click save idea, it then adds it into your idea box and then that goes away. And then you can, if you want to add, add another idea, Max, a second idea, um, And you see it adds it in and then you can go back to those ideas anytime by either the click in the pencil idea or the drop down to toggle you can then edit that idea or you can delete the idea um uh, you can edit edit it for me i'm someone who has these raw ideas of tweets and i need to kind of go back and uh, nurture them a bit more till i get something that actually makes any sense to share so again that was again scratching my own itch with that um the other thing if you scroll up max to the top you can switch it on to it's got night mode um and if you go to the cogs on the left um th this is another authentication you need to do to get twitter to tweet on your behalf um and i added this because the early version and the version in the learning path actually opens twitter and i had a few people saying well what's the point if I'm going to Twitter I'm then getting distracted again so they were asking for a way to just tweet direct um so that should then authorize the app cool and it tells you it's connected you should be able to click away to close that pop-up and then again if you go to a tweet I won't ask you to do it Max because it'll post it onto your Twitter um but if you were to write a tweet and then click tweet it will tweet directly for you again without having to open twitter and lee what's what's these these things these are the yeah so so the stopwatch i had this idea um that I, I like i don't know if anyone's familiar with the the pomodoro technique you know the idea you work 25 minutes and then you break so if you click the timer it throws up a timer and you can like set and the idea here is you can set that time and then see how many tweets you can get done in 25 minutes how many tweet ideas you can kind of sketch out uh, in 25 minutes the um the cycle through the kind of sync uh, icon next to it once you've got a lot of ideas the idea there is you when you come back to twitter another to focus tweet another time is you can cycle through your ideas to see which one you might want to tweet in that moment um and that's so, this one here yeah that one so that will cycle through i mean you've got two ideas so it should just cycle through those two different ideas amazing Is so this... so yeah that's that's pretty much it i mean there's there's more that could be done it could add on scheduling and things um it's been fun to open the project up again and kind of improve the UI, improve the landing page and to add some kind of new features. I am going to be selling the app. Um, so I'm stopping myself from going too far with it. Um, so yeah, uh, there's other things that could be added like scheduling and possibly bring in chat GPT in to maybe do some of the ideas for some of the tweets maybe, but yeah, that's, that's it. Thanks for letting me uh, share it share the app yeah um no i'm hoping I, i'm hoping i actually tweeted um what i what i i hit i hit tweet but i don't know if it's actually tweeted or not um, let's have a look <laughs> <laughs> I, i did skip away from that page quite quickly so who knows but um yeah let's see if i actually did do that but um if not i'll do it i'll tweet again oh yeah yeah no, it did, yeah, yeah it's come up it's come up yeah nice 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 um that is awesome um i think it's it's really smooth experience and it felt really clean navigating through the product cool. um and it felt quick and it felt sharp um so yeah amazing job um and uh welcome to a new era of mindful tweeting <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, compared yeah. to the the manic kind of yeah um not so conducive environment that we have right now so uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah um thanks so much Lee. what so your next steps are to basically sell it um that th that's the plan yeah i'm selling it at the garage uh no code garage sale that the um harold is hosting on the nice. 25th uh i must admit 
now that I've built these things, it's going to be hard to let it go. But yeah, that's that's the plan is to is to sell it. Got you. Um, yeah. Well, uh, congrats on great job and uh, always inspired by your many many thanks. launches. <laughs> thanks, Max. Thank, thanks everyone for letting me demo. Yeah, of course. Um, all right. Um, I think we're yeah good for time. So um, really excited to uh, kind of uh, finish finish off this demo day with one last demo from um, Tom Krunis. Um, so I can see you, which is a good good start. Um, so yeah, over to you, Tom. All right. Appreciated. Excited to jump in. Uh, it's been a whirlwind. Dan was talking earlier about the uh, demo gods, uh, demo day gods lending some support. And on the other end, uh, they were throwing hell and fury at me. So I've been scrambling over here to, to make some last minute uh, uh, updates and bug patches and it works and that's exciting. So that's the power of no code is the last minute you can scramble and still pull it off. Um, so uh, hi, everybody. I'm Tom. Nice to officially meet you. I had the chance to be in the latest uh, boot camp that I guess also ran in November of last year, uh, an absolute joy, and uh, have been exploring all kinds of different builds. Uh, there's a few that I've been doing. The one I'm going to show today is uh, called Way to Go Greenville. It's focused on live and specifically local music, uh, which is an area that a lot of large players just can't cover. If you're thinking of Eventbrite or Yelp or Ticketmaster or any of these broad scale programs that come out, they focus on the largest ticketed events. But there are tons of local venues, local musicians, bands, art that are trying to make their way through. Maybe they don't have a Spotify account. Maybe they just like to play occasionally for family and friends, but still want to get some tips. Uh, there, there's a whole ecosystem in just about every city or large town uh, for all these local artists that aren't getting a place to engage. There just aren't the market incentives. It takes too long to build and develop an app. Until today, that's the power of no code. You're able to, to build quickly and also build at an appropriate scale. Sometimes the scale is uh, best small. So uh, that's the idea is build an app that helps people find uh, local music within a closed ecosystem, uh, like a city or a town and uh, testing it out here in Greenville, South Carolina, just ranked New York Times number 14, uh, place to visit in 2023. So uh, come on by, uh, water's fine. Let's, uh, let's share the screen and get the show on the road here. All right, so uh, the goal at this stage is uh, simple. Let's just showcase that people can find music. Uh, and find artists and be able to save them uh, in their account so that they know who they can uh, try to follow up with. So when people log in, uh, they'll be brought to this page. Uh, it has a little bar that's available uh, showing when uh, different concerts or events are coming up. Uh, I've pre-populated this with a couple. So instead of adding a show uh, and seeing the empty state, you can see we have a couple shows that are coming up tomorrow. Uh, one is with a group called WPOS, where are they playing at Sharky's Pub. Uh, you can see some extra details, a little band photo to introduce you to them. Um, you can also see, oh, Jeff Chandler's playing over at Yeehaw Brewing. Exciting. This is a, a great guy, but he never wants to, he doesn't want to make it big. He actually wants to play in Greenville from here on out. Uh, so you can see some extra details about him, uh, his hometown. Uh, a website. And if you want, you can also choose to favorite him. Uh, when you click the button, you'll see this little heart is connected with it. So it gives you some extra play there. Uh, we'll return back to that in just a little bit uh, foreshadowing. Um, so you start off with being able to look for uh, different shows in your areas. Uh, maybe it's worth looking for the bands or artists. So if you've got some people that you really enjoy seeing. You can see a full list of all the people in the area, run through that list and uh, decide who you're interested in uh, and who you'd like to follow uh, and see about their upcoming events. You can also do the same with venues. So as we add more of these places in, if you've got a local haunt, uh, a place that you like going to consistently, uh, you can go ahead and heart those, favorite those, and know that uh, you can come back. Uh, and at any point, someone can click on the button and add uh, a venue or an artist if uh, if we don't have one already on file. The goal is to crowdsource. 
Um, lastly, people can see all the different groups that they favorited and uh, be able to update that same information uh, from here. So uh, Jeff, sorry, uh, you don't quite make the cut today. Uh, you did yesterday. Um, so that's the initial version. Uh, it's uh, it's right now at the stage where I get the chance to go pitch this to bands and artists and venues to say, what's your interest in this? Uh, how can we build this out and uh, establish some partnerships and really grow this within the community? Uh, so that's a truly crowdsourced app. Um, the main questions that I have is I'm trying to work through this next stage in ways that y'all can help uh, is, Number one, giving some feedback on what would help you uh, as a user. What would you be interested in seeing? Uh, if you're trying to find live local music, what are you interested in? Is it the genre? Is it the uh, songs and uh, artists and venues that your friends are going to? Uh, there's, you know, uh, Caitlin, your app earlier was incredible, and I'm going to be picking your brain for a little bit too. Um, so that's the main question is just what would you be interested in seeing? Uh, and then the secondary question is from a branding standpoint, uh, right now I'm running with a relatively generic green, um, but I'm trying to figure out if this is an app that's better suited for a lighter and more color popping uh, palette, or if it's something that's better designed in more of a dark mode. Uh, so I'd be interested to hear people's thoughts there, and we can talk about those in Slack. Uh, I'm Tom, and there's my demo. Thanks, Tom. Um, awesome stuff. Uh, so the, the main question here I've got is, um, what was your mom's reaction to, uh, to receiving this app? <laughs> oh, uh, man. I, I built it for her to some extent. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I skipped over the best part about this. So uh, this is an idea that my mom and a bunch of her friends had. Uh, they realized that all the events that they were looking for, uh, they couldn't find. Uh, maybe they saw it on a Facebook thread. Maybe someone sent it in a text message, but people were sharing all this information. There just wasn't anywhere consistent. So she thought, oh, if I am already texting my friends, why not text it into an app? And then all of my friends can get notifications of any future update for a show or an artist. Uh, so she was the inspiration for the idea. I was thrilled to be able to build this for her. And uh, we're really excited. She's uh, she's thrilled. And we're already looking at a list of venues to go talk to. Amazing. Um, I yeah, I, I said it. I think on the bootcamp, but I just love the the idea that you can you can build apps for your friends and family um, that can turn into something more, of course. But you can just build them for your friends and family, and almost give the give give the the, the personalized kind of customized app to your friend as a present or gift. Um, and yeah, it's not it's it doesn't require spending twenty k on a developer because you are the developer. So. Um, yeah, that's exciting about this. Um, thanks so much, Tom. Happy to help. <laughs> awesome. Um, cool. Um, well, so I did not expect to be on time. Um, so uh, <laughs> um, we're ready to kind of close up. Um, so a couple of things. Um, let me just share my slides. Um, I've got a couple of things to leave you all on um, after seeing these incredible demos. So two secs. All righty. Um, so, um, <clears throat> amazing. So uh, thanks so much again, again, Tom, for closing us out in style. Um, next steps. So where to kind of move forward after this demo day? Well, um, if you've been inspired by this demo day and you want to see another demo day, um, uh, you may as well uh, jump in to the next one, uh, which is happening on the 19th of April, um, where we see some more cool products launched um, that will be coming out of our next boot camp, um, which kind of brings me on to my next point, which is um, you can apply for the next boot camp um, five um, by the end of the week to get uh, a discount off the program. Um, now, <clears throat> oops. Um, uh, yeah, if you apply by the end of the week, um, and Harold will share a link in the chat um, where you can find out how to do that. Um, yeah, you can uh, can get yourself a nice discount. So, um, but before we go, um, I'd really, really like to say a few thank yous. Um, so, 
Um, firstly, to our demoers, um, thank you for showcasing some awesome products and putting your kind of name and face on the line, because uh, I know this is a very scary thing to do. Um, but also everyone here today that has been there in support and cheering everyone on. Um, so if you enjoyed today's event, um, any love, of course, on social media will be much appreciated. Um, sharing in your networks, the projects, but also 100 Days of No Code will be hugely appreciated. Um, and if you have any feedback on the event itself, uh, so we can tweak things and make it even better next time, uh, just let us know. Um, anyway, that is it from me. Um, I hope you will have a wonderful um, uh, yeah, rest of your evening or day and uh, catch you all on Twitter on Slack, um, on LinkedIn, wherever you are, and uh, good luck on your NOCO journey. All righty. Um, have a good one, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks. Bye. Bye, baby.